My name is Carl Lounsbury. I'm the senior architectural historian at the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. I've been involved in church research for about 30 years now, looking at uh, uh, early American churches up and down the eastern seaboard. So it's a great delight to be able to finally come up here on the Jamestown Tower and look very carefully at its construction. And we found a lot of exciting things uh, in recent months. With the removal of a lot of the um, stucco that was put on this, on the inside of the uh, the tower in the 1890s, uh, Ray Canetti and the other uh, brick masons discovered uh, the fact that uh, the building seems to have been built in two stages. The evidence for that is the uh, size of the bricks are different lower down than they are up uh, at the top of the building. It's slightly smaller in size at the upper part of the building. And also there's a, there's a great difference, or not a great difference, but a difference in the, the mortar composition uh, from the lower part of the tower and the upper part of the tower. Uh, there are two distinct episodes of building. Now that could have been uh, a very short difference of, of time between the first and second construction of a few weeks, a few months. Or it could be a number of years. Perhaps they ran out of money. We just simply don't know. The documents really can't tell us that. So uh, to, to see that it's two, two periods of construction is very exciting. Uh, at the very uh, top of, of, the, of the tower, uh, where it's sort of uh, stepped down, they were removing later uh, repairs from the 1890s and 1960s and discovered embedded in the brickwork were charred timbers, what we call bond timbers, uh, completely blackened, uh, as well as uh, bits of smoke blackening and, and other evidence of burned timbers uh, around some um, uh, mortises in the brickwork on the east and west walls. Uh, and this, obviously, was from a fire that occurred here. And by not seeing it further down the tower, it suggests that this was a fire that started at the top of the building. Perhaps there was a wooden steeple or a roo certainly a roof on this thing that perhaps caught fire. When that happened, I don't know. Uh, at the second floor level is a uh, compass-headed or arched window that looks out from the west wall. And that's the only window in the entire church tower. Um, and recently, with the removal of the uh, mortar and uh, stucco from the jams of that and uh, from the sides of the, of the, of the uh, inside of the, of the tower, uh, Ray Canetti and the other masons discovered mortise pockets for uh, or, or cuts in the brickwork to, that would uh, be used to anchor a wooden window frame into the brickwork, uh, which is sort of typical of construction at that period of time. Not only did they find that, they found it about seven and a half inches from the outer face. There was what we call a scribe line, or a line running down, uh, done in a, a sharp tool, to indicate perhaps that was the outside edge, marking the outside edge of where that uh, window frame was located. So this, again, tells us a lot about uh, uh, where it would have been in, in terms of the depth uh, in the wall, as well as uh, how large that window was in the late 17th and perhaps early 18th century. That window lights a space that was, uh, s that was plastered on the inside, suggesting that it was used in some capacity. The only way that you could get into that uh, room was through a doorway from the, e, uh, from the west wall of the, of the sanctuary into the east wall of the tower. Uh, perhaps this was used as a vestry room where the vestry would meet to decide, uh, dis make decisions about the functioning of the parish. Could have been used as a place where uh, the minister could have used it for a catechism class for uh, young, uh, young people that were entering into the church. Or it could have been a storage area for vestments. The parish uh, chest could have been located here, locked up. Uh, these are some of the examples of how they were used in England in the 17th and 18th centuries. Another exciting discovery in, in these repair works of the church tower is that a number of used paving tiles 
appear uh, inside the brickwork, used uh, in the bricks, including uh, as filler just above the arch on the second floor window. Uh, another one that was found stuffed in one of those uh, po joist pockets uh, turns out to be uh, a used paver. You can see the wear patterns on that as well as the construction, uh, the firing patterns uh, on this thing that the um, pavers are about eight and three quarter inches square and about one and a quarter inches uh, thick. Uh, and I'm wondering if those pavers are not part of the uh, same set of pavers that were used to pave the chancel uh, in perhaps the 1680s or so that then gets reused at some time uh, in the construction of this tower. But the fact that they're they are used and, and worn uh, makes it all the more exciting to think that they came out of the church when it was being repaired or perhaps when the, this tower was added on and there were changes that were made at that time. I wish we could then pin it together to a particular construction period, but I think sometime after about 1680 is reasonable.